Oops. Hold that thought. Just a sec. Don't go anywhere. I wouldn't want you to think that I was super spiritual or anything, so I had to go turn the TV off. I watch TV. Oh no, he's possessed. <laughs> Oh, boy. The grace by which I was given... No, no, but anyways. Praise the Lord. We already have some positive feedback from the new ministry that this camera has brought about as far as clarity of picture, but obscurity of sound. That, in a lot of ways, we uh, have found the high def is kind of fun, but in other ways, we've also found that the sound sucks <laughs> I know that I couldn't wait much longer I was driving me nuts you know not being able to read my devotions on video not being able to share everything that I'm doing on the internet I mean after all we know God needs my help you know that don't you you know that God needs you you know to do what he's got to do because you are God's hands and feet he can't do it without you by golly, you know, when it came down to, you know, making the universe, he decided to sit down and have a conversation with you first. So that way, you know, you could put your two cents in so that you could tell him what was wrong and what was right with the way that he created the world so that you could determine whether or not it was something that would be good or whether it would be bad and that you get to make the decisions, you get to choose, and you get to decide. Not! <laughs> Who do you think you are? God? Let's get real. God don't need you. He doesn't, but you need him, don't you? Maybe. I know I need him. That doesn't mean you need him. <laughs> or do you? I know what I need to do. I need to get into streams in the desert. Because, you know, when I really want God to talk to me, I read a devotional. Yes, I study my Bible. Yes, I have the internet. Yes, I can do like 10,000 different Bible translations and find out every different differentiation that there is. I can do word studies from galore from Google. <laughs> so does that make me a THD, a PhD, or a WWB? I don't know, but I don't think so. I think we need to trust in the Lord with all our heart, that we need to apply that little bit that we do think we know and discover we don't know as much as we thought we know in the first place. So in turning to him and recognizing that we need him in streams in the desert, fret not. <laughs> Does that mean I don't get to play my guitar? That's a joke. This to me is a divine command. The same is, thou shalt not steal. Now, let us get to the definition of fretting. One good definition is, made rough on the surface. Rubbed or worn away, and a peevish, irrational, fault-finding person not only wears himself out, but is very overwhelming to others. What? You mean, being critical and being peevish and being selfish and being, you know, like, uh, tearing at, biting at, <clears throat> Chewing them up, pooey, spitting them out, telling them that they're not good enough, that they're not the true faith, the true Christians. That's wearing others out. That's fretting. To fret is to be in a state of vexation. And in this psalm, we are told not to fret because of evildoers. But what if they're God-doers? Are they God-doers or are they doing for God? Does God need them? Did God tell them? Did God lead them? Did Jesus say it? Did Jesus do it? They don't like those guys. They don't do like, you know, the same day I do. I don't like those guys because they aren't reverent. You know, they don't talk in the King James, so I don't think it that they knoweth what it is if that doeth it. If. 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 They don't have the gift. <gasps> 
They're possessed. So, is it only evildoers? Or could it be God-doers? Or do-doers? That may be part of the problem. Don't get vexed. Don't fret. Don't worry about it. Why? A, <coughs> a physician will tell you that a fit of anger is more injurious to the system than a fever, and a fretful disposition is not conducive to a healthy body. And you know rules are apt to work both ways. The next step down from fretting is crossness, and that amounts to anger. Let us settle this matter and be obedient to this command, fret not. In other words, don't worry about it. Why? Well, you see, you know, I think God's got it in control. You know, I may be wrong. It's true he created the universe and he didn't ask you. It's true that he laid it all out in a book and that's called creation, you know, and it's all being um, accomplished exactly the way he already knew and forward and planned and had it already determined in his mind that it was going to happen and that all circumstances of your life are already written in the book and that's all you believe going to happen. But that you still have free will, so you think that you have some kind of determination over what God's going to do because you're telling God what you can do and what you can because of your free will that you think because you're sitting here on earth and he's already been up there and he already sees what you've already done, so he's already got a plan ahead of time according to what he was going to do from the first place that you thought you had your free will, but when you get there you realize it was already planned out ahead of time. But, but, he needs me. No, we don't. So, is that a bad thing? Or is it a good thing? You see, the good news is because he doesn't need you, he gets to do what he wants to do anyways. But the better part is if you participate with him, you get to be happy with it. Because he's going to accomplish it, whether you're in the way or whether you're with him in the way. You see, anyways, one way or another, God gets his way. He doesn't need you. You aren't his hands and his feet. You get to participate with him if you allow him into your life. If you let the Lord lead you and you fret not because of evildoers and because of God doers. And sometimes because of do doers. Because they do do it. <laughs> and it's do do all over. So the next time that you see a mess, you know, when it comes to Christianity, it's probably not the evildoers that did it. might be you and me so can we kind of like you know cut down on the fretting maybe get back to the rejoicing to the encouraging to the comforting to the tenderness the realization that if Jesus is in you both to do and to will of his good pleasure and he's accomplishing his purpose irregardless of whether you do it or not what do you got to worry about? What are you fretting about? Isn't that really not trusting in the Lord with all your heart? I think so. I might be wrong. 